there. Welcome back to Pin Cut Sew. So, I have been promising for a little bit now a tote bag tutorial after I made this quilted tote bag and I posted a short of it of the process. I had several people say they'd be interested in the tutorial. So I went ahead and created a pattern for my pattern shop for this basic, I call it the beginner's tote bag. And so today we're going to make this tote, but I'm going to show you how to customize it into something more like this. So before we move on though, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the like button if you don't mind, leave me a comment. I love comments on YouTube. People are so engaged. I love it. And I think that's everything. Let's get started. So this today is not going to be a hand quilting tutorial. I have one of those coming up on an actual baby quilt. But if what you're here for is the actual hand quilting part, I would love for you to stay and see how to make the tote bag, but it's not going to be including the hand quilting tutorial, just because I didn't want this to turn into an hour and a half long video. But I am going to teach you how to take a quilt block or a panel in my case, and use this tote bag idea with it. So you can go grab this tote bag tutorial, the printable version of this from my shop. You don't need it to make this. I'm gonna give you all the measurements here in the video, but it is definitely going to be more convenient for you if you have that printable version. So for a couple bucks in my shop, you can go get the pattern printed out and make it over and over again. And then you can customize it into things like this. So this tote bag has a lining, it has pockets inside and two straps. So this is just the basic one. I absolutely love these fabrics. I think they're so cute. These came from Hobby Lobby. This one I made because I had two lonely quilt blocks laying around that I knew I was never going to finish the whole quilt for. I just don't have time during this phase of my life. So, but I wanted to use them and so I turned them into this cute tote. I used linen. Basically, you just create a border and then I hand quilted and I just made the tote bag the same as this one. So today, I'm going to use this hymns panel. If you are a church lady, then you will really love this. You, I will link you to this. I ordered it from Fat Quarter Shop, I think, or Annie's. I'll link to it either way. So you can buy this beautiful panel. And I decided to make tote bags out of these for gifts and also one for my sister-in-law who is going through cancer treatment. This is her second time going through cancer treatment. So we're all really struggling along with her and praying for her. And I thought she would really like this it is well with my soul panel made into a tote bag for her so as you can see and i did take some photos of this process you need to make your panel bigger so that it measures 15 by 17 which is the measurements for our tote bag pattern so in order to make it 15 by 17 i first cut out the panel and i ended up with a rectangle that was 11 by 12. so i needed to add inches to the sides you'll just have to do your own math here because your panel or quilt blocks will be different. And then I needed to add height and length also. But since you're making a tote bag and this last two inches is gonna be turned into a boxed corner, then you need to add two inches more to the bottom than you do the top. So you just need to add strips first to the sides, then to the top and bottom, and then cut it to 15 by 17. So it makes sense to add bigger strips than you think you need so that then you can trim it down. So I trimmed mine exactly the size I needed it. And then I went ahead and just did a running stitch. I just did very minimal top quilting. Oh, you'll wanna put your flannel. I use flannel for interfacing for all tote bags. You might not prefer that, but I've made a lot of bags in my day. Some of them require, like they call for heavier interfacing and I do not like how it turns out so crispy. Some of them call for no interfacing at all and then you just have kind of a floppy tote, which maybe you like that or maybe you like the crispy. So you can decide, but for me, flannel is my favorite way to interface bags. It doesn't add weight, it doesn't make it crispy, but it makes it more substantial. So I'm going to be using flannel for my interfacing for this entire project. When you quilt it, you'll want to make the flannel a little bit bigger or if you're using batting you could use quilt batting too especially if you're using a quilt block like i did for my other bag you'll want to cut the flannel bigger then quilt it and then trim it so that's the step that i'm on right now i'm gonna go ahead and trim my flannel now i have a perfectly trimmed 15 by 17 inch panel 
Tote bags are really easy to adapt to the size that you want. So if you have a favorite tote bag, you can go measure it. And you can decide to make yours that size if you want. Okay, so for our boxed corners, we are going to take two inch squares out of both bottoms. Box corners are easy. If you've never made these before, this will teach you how they work. There's more than one method, but this is the easiest for me to explain to beginners. I'm just going to cut these out. Don't be scared. Okay, now since I've cut my front, I have a nice pattern to use to cut the rest of my pieces. So, I need one more. I'm going to use this solid blue for the backing. I mean, for the back of the bag. Okay, I also need one more piece of flannel. Interfacing means it's just what goes in between to give the bag substance. In case you're unfamiliar with that word. Good fabrics for tote bags are things like this is duck cloth, which is from Hobby Lobby. It's like a lighter weight canvas, but also canvas or denim. Certain home deck fabrics, things with structure. Although, of course, for my quilted one, I just used cotton quilt blocks and linen. So really, you can use anything. I would not use a knit stretchy fabric. But, I mean, you could try it. <laughs> okay, and then also I need to cut two of my lining. Of course, you can just use your rotary cutter to cut all these layers, but I find I get them all to be more exactly the same if I use the first one I cut as a pattern. Okay, so all my bag and lining pieces are cut. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut my pocket and my straps. You might prefer longer straps than me. For me, this is my magic length. I like it so that I can carry the bag, either it fits up on my shoulder, but it also doesn't hit the ground if I'm holding it by the handles. So for me, this is the magic formula, 25 inches long. And then my pocket, I'm gonna cut from my lining fabric and it needs to be six and a half by 10. Okay, so here's my pocket, six and a half by 10. Okay, that's all the cutting part. Let's start sewing. So I already have this panel with its interfacing attached. If you want to, you can go ahead and baste this on quarter inch from the raw edge with a long sewing stitch just to hold everything in place. I'm going to skip that step because I've done this so many times. I'm confident I can keep everything together. Okay, so then this interfacing piece goes on this piece. Okay, so after you've basted your interfacing to your main bag pieces, your exterior bag pieces, you're going to place them right sides together and we're going to pin and stitch the sides and the bottom, leaving the top open. Use my clips because it's kind of thick. Wonder clips are a good tool to have around. I will link you to some. Especially if you sew with kids, they're less at risk of poking themselves and they just think they're fun. <laughs> kids would enjoy sewing this tote bag, I think too. This is a good kid-friendly sewing project. Okay, so I'm gonna go take this over to my machine and sew my sides and bottom. I'm going to use 3 8 inch seams. Okay, I sewed my seams and I pressed them open the best that you can. Just do your best on the bottom part. It helps to like fold it up like this and then press it open. Okay, so to box the corners, we are going to bring these seams to meet in the middle. And we're just going to stitch. Make sure you get all the way to the folded edge. 3 8 inch seams right here. Just meet them in the middle. See how easy that is? Okay, there's my beautiful boxed corners. So now I'm going to turn it right side out. If you feel like you need to, you can go baste this top edge together. I'm not going to, but you feel free to do so if you want. Okay, look how pretty.
And since I centered my panel towards the top and left two extra inches when I put the bottom border on, then it's perfectly framed on the front of the bag. All right, let's move on to the handles. So again, with the handles, some people use interfacing inside of them. I don't prefer to do that. I just don't like them that crispy. So what I do is I'm going to go press it in half. You just finger press it so I can show you. Then I open it up and then I press the ends into the center and then refold it in half. And then we're going to stitch on both long ends all the way down, top stitch it about an eighth of an inch from both edges. So I'll go do that part. All right, here are my finished straps. So now I can baste them to the top of my tote bag. I'm going to put them three and a quarter inches in from each side seam. So I'm going to put the edge of it three and a quarter inches in. Put it even with the top edge. Make sure not to twist it so it should be not like this then there's a twist it should be like this before you after you sew it you can hold it up and make sure they're sitting the right way and then at the back i'll just line them up with the ones on the front okay i'm just gonna go baste my straps in place okay the exterior of the bag is finished now i can move on to the lining first let me make sure my straps are how they're supposed to be no twists and they are okay so i'm going to set this aside and we're going to sew the pocket onto one lining piece before we finish i'm going to press my hem under twice and top stitch it okay so i went ahead and top stitched the hem in place and then i turned under and pressed a quarter inch on all the other edges and i mitered these corners so now we're going to center it onto our lining piece we're going to put it i think four inches four inches down from the top and make sure it's centered oops move it up a little bit make sure it's straight perfectly even okay and i'm going to just pin it pin the pocket in place when you pin it, you want to make sure your pins can be pulled out in the direction that you're sewing. So if I put my pins in this way while I'm sewing, it'd be hard to get them out. So when I pivot, I'm going to be going this way. And when I pivot again, I'm going to be going this way. My son, can you hear him laughing? Let me go close his door. So we're going to go edge stitch this along all three of the side and bottom edges. All right, my pocket is stitched down and I went ahead and pressed it in half so I have a dividing line to stitch down to divide it in two. You could also put the, make this one, divide this one into thirds so you can make pen pockets. That's an option too. All right, so my pocket's done. I went ahead and stitched down my pressed line and now we're going to stitch the front and back linings to each other. The same as we did for the exterior of the bag, except this time we're gonna leave an opening in the bottom. Maybe like five inches for turning right side out later. So we're going to do that, and then we're also gonna box the corners the same as we did for the exterior. My lining is complete. I sewed my sides, pressed my seams open, sewed the bottom, left an opening, in the bottom and then I boxed my corners. So do not turn this right side out yet. It's time to put them together. So with your bag right side out, your lining inside out, you're going to insert the bag into the lining and start pinning around the top edge. The, the handles will be sandwiched in between and the side seams need to meet up. So maybe clips would be better. Should fit perfectly. And we're going to go sew this entire top seam at 3 eighths of an inch. Okay, my top edge is stitched together. So 
turn it right side out through that opening you left. But before you put the lining inside, we need to go stitch up the hole in the lining. So I'm going to turn it under as if we had sewn it and just edge stitch right along the edge. All right, so my lining is securely closed and now I can put it inside. This is a very important step. Oops. This next one, because this is what makes it so that your lining's not bunched up and you don't have any puckers around the top edge. So you can see it looks kind of a mess, right? I'm going to take this over to my ironing board and really iron it really super good from both the outside and the inside. So I'll put it over my ironing board arm like this, get this edge nice and crisp, press it. Then I'll also press it from the inside, sort of manipulating both layers into place with my hands. Then I'm going to go top stitch it all the way around the edge. All right. Oh my gosh, there is a lawnmower at my neighbor's house. <laughs> Sorry about that noise. I hope you can still hear me. I finished. I just wanted to emphasize the importance of pressing that top edge. A lot of beginners, I'm trying to talk louder because the lawnmower. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Maybe I'll just wait. Okay, I was saying a lot of times beginners or people who are in a hurry maybe don't do all the pressing that they should. So if a pattern says to press, just trust the pattern and press. <laughs> if you want to take your work from craftsy looking to professional looking, pressing is one of the keys to doing that. So I hope you love this tutorial. I wanted to give you some more ideas for customization. There are of course tons more fabric panels online that you can buy. I think this is such a good way to use them. Sometimes it's hard to even know what to do with those panels. So this is a good idea, but of course you can just make it solid like this one with fun fabrics. Also piece together fabrics, two or three of them make it two toned. This one you can see too has a long strap as well as the short straps with some fun hardware. And then this one has some ribbon trim added lace, I guess. I don't know, ribbon lace. And once again, if you have some languishing quilt blocks, you can use those to make a tote bag too. So this is so customizable and that's why I wanted to release the pattern for just this basic tote because the options to make it personal are endless. So, ooh, if you have an embroidery machine, it'd be fun to embroider something personalized on the front too. That's another idea. So if you make this, I would love to see it. Tag me on Instagram at pincutso or find me at my website, pincutsostudio.com and send me an email there because I would love to see what you make. I'll see you soon. Bye.